My name is William, William Ayot. I'm a poet and a playwright, and I work in organisations, introducing people to concepts that come out of poetry and come out of the arts. Here's a poem called The Contract, a poem from the lead. And in the end, we follow them. Not because we are paid, not because we might see some advantage, not because of the things they have accomplished, not even because of the dreams they dream, but simply because of who they are. The man, the woman, the leader, the boss, standing up there when the wave hits the rock, passing out faith and confidence like life jackets, knowing the currents, holding the doubts, imagining the delights and terrors of every landfall. Captain, pirate and parent by turns, the bearer of our countless hopes and expectations. We give them our trust. We give them our effort. What we ask in return is that they stay true. What we've learnt over the last 20 or 30 years is that the arts can serve the world's organisations in a very specific way. We can bring flexibility, we can bring creativity, uh, we can bring the soft skills of relationship and trust building to organisations. And the best way that I've found over the years to, to facilitate that is to use poems. Doodle at the edge. Another meeting, another agenda, another list of buzzwords, initials and initiatives. PSU is entering phase three, while the CDR wants G2 to go to level five. If we go the full nine yards on this one, if we get proactive, get out of the box, get our teams together and on the same hymn sheet, if we hit the ground running, if we downsize HR, if we get the money on board and our asses into gear, then we can change something, make a difference, change what the other guys changed last week. Meanwhile, the god has left the garden. The muse lies minimised at the corner of our screens. Not dead, not buried, but ignored and unseen, like a doodle at the edge of an action plan. Me? I say make a sacrifice to the doodle. Pick some flowers, speak a poem, feed the tiny muse, draw, paint, sing or dance, and you'll bring the gods back into the boardroom. The laughing, smiling, weeping gods of the nighttime and the wild. What we find in using a poem is that we can bring the left brain and the right brain together. The managerial left brain, if you like, and the, the right brain, which I like to think of as the brain that is necessary in leadership. When we need compassion, when we need empathy, when we need uh, the skills of relationship, and when particularly we need the bigger picture. You guys. This is your time for frosty mornings in towns you will never know, for resentful receptionists and chirpy secretaries, for flip charts and outcomes, for plans and reports, for too much coffee and too many words. This is your time. This is your time for dressing in the dark and cars to the airport, for planes and trains and railway stations, for loneliness, for grief, for embracing doubt, for keeping hard secrets in the face of love. This is your time. This is your time for being what your people need you to be, for managing fear while showing calm, for being their mother, for being their father, for holding the line or the hope or the dream. This is your time. This is your time for sudden sunlight breaking through the overcast, for sweet green spaces in concrete canyons, for the care of strangers, for anonymous gifts, for learning to receive little acts of kindness. This is your time. This is your time for standing to be counted, for being yourself, for becoming the sum and total of your life, for finding courage, for finding your voice, for leading because you are needed now. This is your time. Poetry offers insights and opportunities for people to deal with complexity, with paradox, with some of the more complicated issues of the world of leadership so that we end up with a, a rounded 360 degree view of life. And that is what managers and leaders need.